Well, it would be good to explain a bit about, I, I like that our show is about synchronicity and uh, what really intrigued me is that this kind of starts off with the synchronicity of you doing a, a lecture series, preparing a lecture series about Atlantis and holy cities and stuff like that. And then uh, this involved Astana, sort of leading up to Astana, Astana being like the newest incarnation of the holy city. And then uh, you were contacted by, uh, the, the government of uh, Canada to interact with people from Astana. So I just thought maybe you could start there explaining. Yeah, that is, that is, uh, it, it's almost uncanny now that I think about it, but uh, uh, such is the case. I was researching for um, a class that I was going to offer at the University of Winnipeg called The Architect for Paradise. And uh, the synopsis of this class was basically looking at a chronology of world history where there was this effort to basically, architecturally speaking, bring heaven on earth. Uh, so I was going to begin with Atlantis and go right through uh, the history of the ages and conclude with Astana, the new capital city of Kazakhstan. So at the time that I was basically in that area of my research looking at Astana, um, I received an impromptu call from the uh, protocol office in Manitoba. Uh, which is uh, situated in the Manitoba Legislative Building. And uh, the request was if I would be willing to give the ambassador to Kazakhstan and his wife a tour, a private tour of the Manitoba Legislative Building, as they both had PhDs in history and they would uh, uh, find that facet of Winnipeg's history interesting. So, I mean, I jumped at the opportunity, not only because I was currently researching Astana, but um, uh, I was thinking what better way would there be to interact with um, a senior member of the state to ask him some very pressing questions um, about um, uh, Kazakhstan. So when this, this request was on and every single tab in my computer read Astana, 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 and had many tabs open, uh, uh, what I did was I said I would be thrilled to give them a tour on the condition that I could have breakfast with them first, uh, which was agreed. And when we met for uh, breakfast, I think I was rather brash, but uh, being in the environment of the Hotel Fort Gary, I think that um, it uh, allowed, uh, added to the allure. I introduced myself by basically saying to the ambassador, Ambassador Ziglov, very wonderful man, by the way, um, I said uh, pretty much uh, in our first encounter, I know what you're doing. And he said, oh, very nice to meet you, Dr. Alba. What are we doing? And I said, well, you're doing what every other great civilization has done since the time of time. And uh, he said, okay, pray tell, what is that? I said, well, you're using monumental architecture to tell the story of your uh, uh, arrival on the world stage. And he agreed and said, yes, that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, and I said, I've been following the um, developments in your city with great interest. Uh, for many reasons, but uh, I feel that you're missing something. He said, well, what is that? Laughing, um, continuing in my kind of bombastic tone. He said, um, uh, I said, you're, you're missing a foundation myth. And he said, okay, what is that? I said, it's basically what all these other great civilizations and which you're in, uh, currently evoking uh, have done, uh, which is they have encoded into their, their city and civic scape a, uh, a national epic, a story that tells about the birth and rise and soul of the nation. So if you talk about Greece, you think of the Iliad. If you talk about Rome, you think of Romulus and Remus. If you talk about Constantinople, you immediately think of the Gospels. I said, what is your foundation then? My impression is, is that it is rooted in the, your, your, uh, your civic state and your national emblems and that it's wholly indigenous. And he said, <laughs> okay, I'm most intrigued. I think that you should come to Astana for a national celebration. So um, uh, I received executive treatment um, with a first class ticket to Astana for the national celebrations where I spent a week there with um, uh, basically a private entourage and, and visit to dine with the, the president, the chief city architects, civic planners, and um, uh, the mayor, uh, the ministers of culture, and I had an opportunity to, to meet with the, the this forward-thinking nation and impress upon them the idea of uh, building 
if it wasn't already there. My impression is it is already there, uh, but uh, perhaps doing what I've never done before. I'm used to decoding building. What I've never done is encode building. So I thought, given this kind of panache for the, the decoding of architecture, <laughs> what, what a great opportunity would there be to maybe see if there was an opportunity to encode the architecture. And so I, as I was there and going through these extraordinary buildings, I mean, I, we're going to show images. Uh, uh, they, they're the marvel of the age. Uh, it's kind of like a Eurasian Dubai. Um, but um, uh, as I was going through the, the, the buildings, the history and the culture, I realized that it was much more impressive than all the pop cultural references to Astana, which if you do a Google search, what you'll find is Astana is the new Illuminati capital of the New World Order. It, it's viewed with Masonic symbolism. Freemasonry is rampant everywhere, uh, from the Pyramid of Peace and Reconciliation to the Baichara Tower and the, the, the Presidential Palace. And um, uh, what uh, uh, I realized is that that was actually a, shadow, a very shallow uh, perspective of a much deeper mystery, which uh, Jim and I um, uh, produced as a microfilm, uh, a miniature documentary that um, we would like to continue to po uh, put out. And so the show hopefully will we'll delve into a few of those mysteries, I think, probably just two. Okay. And um, you, like, um, how, do, how do you compare Astana to the ledge? And, to, and how does Winnipeg connect to this? Okay, well, you know, I think on that front, what I've uh, done here is I've put together, uh, hopefully this works, a series of slides that contextualizes why I was even interested in the architecture of paradise and how Winnipeg is uniquely situated along that trajectory. I know it sounds bizarre anyone else outside of uh, the center of the continent that Winnipeg would be uh, envisioned as a heavenly Jerusalem, but that was certainly in the minds of the um, architects and city planners 100 years ago. Uh, and the la most lasting memorial of it, of course, is the Manitoba Ledge, but there is a, uh, a much greater landscape in which the Manitoba Ledge rises up out of as a crown jewel. The, the, it, it seems that most of the public attention is placed on the ledge, not realizing that it is part of a trajectory of a greater uh, 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 element of uh, architectural history and lore. So what I thought I'd do, because uh, I know that this is broadcast out of, out of New York, I would begin to situate Winnipeg on the international stage with, um, with a few images and how actually all of this is <laughs> very uniquely connected to uh, Kazakhstan.